Okay, now in this exercise, let's revisit the stars we have been making and see how we can improve it by using arrays. So, in the previous exercise, we draw two stars that were um, moving in a circular path together. So, in this new part, what I want to do is I'm going to build upon the existing code. So, I want to create a fork. And for that, I just use this um, sort of separate separation symbol. Then I press fork. And maybe re let's rename it um, exercise array. And submit. Okay, so I just have made a duplicate copy of the previous code and I'm going to edit it out a bit. Um, so if you look at the... Okay, so let me just delete everything we have at the bottom of here because it's just making a cluster, giving me anxiety. Um, and let's see what we have done in the draw function previously. We have basically um, created the variables and created two objects. And we are shooting those objects of stars each one by one and they're rotating together. Cool. But what if I want to have more objects, like instead of two, which is quite easy for me to manage at this point, what if I want to have 7, 8, 1000? It's just going to go out of hand. I don't really want to um, create all 1000 objects one by one and control them all together. And that's why I'm actually going to use an array. So I'm going to create a, another global variable called stars. Maybe let's just keep this. Um, and it's going to be an array. Great. So first of all, let me just get rid of the second one. And the first one, we're going to just change it up a bit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the x and y just as width and height and I'm going to edit it out depending on what is the current star that's being created and I also am going to create a new variable um, maybe star count and that's going to be the number of stars I want to have um, let's have something like seven for now and we can edit out later so in the previous tutorial example, I mentioned that loops and arrays, they go hand in hand very perfectly because loops enable us to um, access all of the indices of a array and we can create elements within a loop. So I'm going to create a loop with let i equals to zero I less than star count, so I'm going to have these number of elements and put I plus plus. Open more brackets. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to initialize this star object for each element that is being held within my array. So it's going to be stars i is a new star. And I can also shoot and show those stars in there. OK. 
Okay. Just change it up a bit. Because now I'm not using my star. I'm using the star sign here. Okay. Before I run, I want to ask a real quick question. Are you seeing anything um, that is a bit annoying when it comes to this? Um, okay, maybe I'll just like run it and I'll show it to you. Oops. Got it. Getting an error. Gotta get rid of that my star. Okay, let's run it. Yeah, so I'm actually not able to see anything because I'm already at the at the end of my width and height. So let's just divide these by two. And I'm seeing all of these arrays, but the problem is they all are being created at the same place. And that's why I'm actually just creating all these seven elements together in the same location. And it makes no difference that I just created like seven elements because they all are being created in the same place with the same color and same size. And that's why I can actually take advantage of this variable i to make each object a bit more special. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this um, x and y by i plus 1. I'm using i plus 1 because i starts iterating from 0 and I don't want to divide anything by 0. That is, uh, it's just not a bad, it's just a bad call. Don't ever do it. What I can also do is um, this number of uh, points to start have something like 10 minus i. Mm, that should work. So let me run it again. Now they're being created at separate spots and it seems to be appearing a bit better, but we can still edit out the color by using a second array. So I'm just going to, um, maybe I can just do it inside in here. I'm going to create a new, new color array. Oops. And it is going to be holding on to call 1 and call 2. And I can use this i to actually access, also access the indices of column, colors array, and assign the color in here. But there's one thing happening. You see, the i in here, it goes from 0 the star count, which is 7, but col the colors array, it only has two indices, 0 and 1. If you remember our pattern um, exercise in the previous week, we used this mathematical operation called modular, modulus, modular arithmetic, and that's what's going to be coming in handy in here. So what we can do is, let's define a new color that's going to be used in here. And that is just going to be the colors i mod 2. So the i mod 2 is going to become 0 if the i is an even number, and it's going to become 1 if it's an odd number. And if you have um, more indices, like if you have three colors, then you have to change it to three. And that's how you're able, you're able to map like the indices in a smaller array into a larger array. And this is just like an easier programming convention. So let's give it another run. And now we're getting this um, colorful Mishimoshi uh, soup happening in here. And it's quite exci exciting. Um, looks quite pretty in my opinion. So yeah this is the end of this exercise as, as always go around play with it make it your own see what you can change it 